going to my left, and I'm going to put you on to them. Um, we'll field your questions. Um, if you, I'll be patient. Hopefully, you can get through everybody's, but I seriously doubt it. <laughs> A lot of you here. Thank you all very much. My name is Linda Valentine, and I was Sailor Moon. <laughs> Now I officially love every single person in this room. <laughs> Let's just start the lineup for kisses now. <laughs> thank you. What happened? I don't know. Like, I broke the microphone again. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming here, and thank you so much for being again, John. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's this bit right here. It's probably but who cares? I'll be so gentle with it now. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank you all for being so, so generous and so loving. You guys are the most wonderful people. Honest to God. This is my very first conference I've ever done. My first anime thing. Woo! I know. <laughs> having Christmas dinner with every single one of you. Because <laughs> my family does not nearly love me as much as you guys. Actually, one of your daughters does. One of my daughters is right there in the corner. That's my daughter, Shay. I have three daughters, and she, because she is here, now she's my favorite. Just <laughs> I think that's fair enough, don't you, Shay? Yeah. My little mini moon. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm oh, now my hello. I'm Katie Griffin and I played Sailor Mars. <laughs> um, and I, I too am really grateful for everybody for all the support. This is insane. We we worked so hard on this show and it was just um it was such a long time ago, and it's just you, you don't realize how many Sailor Moon fans there are until you're here! Woo! So thank you very much for, uh, for coming out. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Susan Roman. I played Sailor Jupiter. Thank you so much. Um, you know, all of us are just uh, blown away by how incredible everybody is, how open and loving and um, demonstrative everybody is. I mean, sometimes we think of Canadians and Canadian fans as being like sort of uber polite and reserved. And, <laughs> well, you know, and, and I'm so glad that you're not. Because, <laughs> because we can feel that, you know, coming back at us every time oh, we meet you in autograph day. sessions or other panels or whatever, and it's great to see you all dressed up. It's great to see the artwork that you've done, the photographs that you've made and that you've given to us. Uh, we really don't deserve it, because we went in and we did our best and we did That's our job. That's a lot of baloney, yes you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for that. <laughs> and I'll pay you later at the door. <laughs> so, Anyway, I guess we should start with the questions and uh, and away we go. Who wants to feel it? First off. Yeah. Um, so first off, thank you so much for creating like a masterpiece of a show. Mm -hmm. And um, my question is, when you started at like, the very beginning, did you ever think that it would become something this big? Like when you were raised, do you think it was going to be like something iconic that it has turned into now? Was, uh, this one's definitely for Susan. Mm -hmm. um, well, if, if I'd been Sailor Moon, it would have been even more iconic. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, at the beginning, we thought that it was really, really neat because it was the first time that any of us had seen five female characters portrayed uh, so strongly. And that they were, they had fights with one another, but they, were, they always had each other's back. And that was kind of unusual. So we kind of, I was I was very excited about it, but I didn't really know because it was the first of its kind. You know the costumes and the transforming and the whole nine yards. But 
when I saw the first dub, when we had finally got uh, the first show done in English, I, I said to myself, I think, I think we're on to something. How did you feel? Because Katie was there at the beginning too, right? I actually had no idea. I just, I, we went in there and I, I didn't know it was going to be this big, as big as it is until I started to see the merchandise. And then I saw, yep, yeah, maybe, maybe it's going to be big. I think it is. And then, yeah, anyway, I can just keep rambling because that's what I do. But yeah, I had no idea until much, much later into this video. So. I know, but if I do, it was... <laughs> I'm using this one. Now, because I started, because I was the third Sailor Moon, technically, not technically, I was the third Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I knew that Sailor Moon was a, like, the kids liked it, and, you know, they were all watching it, so that's kind of neat, and so I went and auditioned for it, and then I get this part, and all of a sudden, the gravity of what I just got hit me, and I was like, oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> struggled with it back and forth. And I also, because we didn't have the internet like we do today, you know, I didn't realize how humongous it was. And, you know, slowly as the years have peeled back, peeled back, you really realize, wow, this is, this is, this is something that's really great to be part of. Yeah. Very proud to be part of it. Uh, I'll add, maybe, uh, I'll add something to that from, because, being the voice director, I dealt with the performers, plus I also dealt with the production. And uh, if anybody could possibly comprehend the insanity uh, uh -huh. <laughs> that transpired uh, with all the production people, the changing of studios, uh, the personalities that you will never ever get to experience because this is what you see. You see what's on TV and you're meeting the performers, but that level above was in such a state of disarray that I'll be honest with you, I never thought it was going to go because it was just insane. There were panic attacks by various people. There was the just the insanity of getting it done, getting it done on time, and, and, and meeting deadlines and Things missing and things not arriving. Remember, of course, uh, as. Just turn that one off. Of course, we weren't in the uh, the technological age that we are in now, and because of that, we had to wait till physical tapes arrived, and we're doing it on a rhythm band system. So sometimes. The actual video and then the, the what is called the rhythmo band, which was the English track matching the lip movements of the original Japanese, sometimes came separately, uh, and sometimes they were incredibly delayed because it was all land transport and sometimes air transport and sometimes by whatever it was getting it from Montreal as well, where a lot of the, the initial work was done, and so. Um, I, I hate to be the guy that says, I don't know, but I didn't know at the beginning that it was going to be the hit that it was. And to me, it took a little bit of a, a little time for it to sort of sink in and go, wow, they really, they like it. They really <laughs> like it. <laughs> and uh, the rest as they say. Yeah. All right. If Sailor Moon, Mars, and Jupiter were competing for a beauty pageant and John Stockwell was a judge... Oh. What would you say to convince him that you should get the title? <laughs> if they were all competing... First of all, I'd win. That's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If they were all competing and I were, I were the judge? Yeah, and then they have to convince you. What would they say? You know what? I'm going to let you come up here. Oh. Put you in that position, okay? <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, you know what? I know all these ladies very, very well. I've worked with all of them. Uh, they're all very lovely ladies. They're all exceptionally talented, which is the real thing. The real, the real crux of it is: can you do the job? Are you a, are you more than just a competent performer? Can you take a script and make it dance? Right. And all of these people can. They are wonderful performers. I always. They know they come in at least to audition. 
Every, these, these gals get a shot because they're consummate professionals. And I mean it. Funny, you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to York for a year. Oh, yeah, there you go. And when I stopped, I started acting. And then I went, oh, I don't have any direction. I need direction. I need direction. I, I want to know where I'm going. And I was working at that point, but I was sort of like, ah. So I went back to Ryerson. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and in Ryerson, it was a theater school, and they had a voice uh, class as well. So I took this voice class, of course, because it sort of you had to do everything, and I loved it. As soon as I got in, in a studio, I just went, oh, I love this so much. I just felt so safe. <laughs> I loved having the headphones on. I loved everything about it. For those of you who think that voice acting, you know, it sounds like the best job in the world, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So anyways, well, when I was at, uh, the, in this class, we had a guest come in who did animation. And I was in awe. Immediately, I knew her voice. I knew the things that she'd been on. I just heard it and just went, oh, I know her. I, 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 I. And you know, she, she gave away many of her secrets. Foolish, foolish woman. <laughs> and I just ate up everything she said. I just sat there bathing in what she said, and I worshipped her. And that person is right here. Oh. Oh. Down the road, I was like, oh, I'll tell you, every time I go into a, a still, when I go into an audition room and she's there, I'm like, <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, so that, you know, that's a good segue for you. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, that's just, I remember that um, that day at Riders, and that was the very first time that I ever did that seminar, and I was so nervous. And I walked into the, the classroom and I thought that I would be able to, you know, be far away up at a, I don't know, on, on a lectern or something, but I was actually sitting at a table like this and I had all my notes about what I was going to say and my hands were shaking so much that I couldn't even pick up my paper. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, going, going, you know, when you try to, you, if you pick it up, your hands are going to shake, so you just kind of like take the paper and sprinkle it all over the place. And, and I was just so nervous. And then a couple of years later, I saw you at an audition, and you got the part. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, this, this was the Avengers. Oh, oh, it was my first part, too. So can you imagine? So there I am. I've just done this class a couple of years ago, and and I and I remember you specifically from the class because you, you, asked, nice. yeah, you asked questions. <laughs> and, so, and so afterwards, um, my agent phoned me and said, well, it was between you and another new performer. And I'm sorry to say, um, she got it. And oh. I said, who was it? And he said, it was Linda Valentine. And I went, what were you saying about the hints or tricks that I gave away? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's, it, it was, I said, if anybody were to get it, I'm really glad that it was her, because I liked her right from the start. OK, so next question. Yes. Oh, okay, Katie. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about me, Susan. That's why we're I'm here. Just baby girl over here. I just want to. I am. Um, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, I was. I just do a lot of, or not a lot, but I do some on-camera stuff. So I was acting before uh, voice acting, and then um, a friend of mine who was the original Darian, Reno Romano, said, you have to audition for this. So he basically asked Nicole to see me because I wasn't getting an audition for it because I hadn't done any voice voice work before. So I went in for Sailor Mars, and, and that was my very first voice job. Just, Woo! Just like that. Woo! And so, um, so, yeah, it's very special. Sailor Mars, oh, my God. She's so special to me. So, yeah, and now I, I haven't looked back. That's primarily what I do. What is the most memorable moment out of the entire, like, backstage, everything of uh, Sailor Moon itself? 
for me? All of you. Where's the... All right, for me, oh, it was when I finally got to a place, because when I first began, I was trying to imitate Terry Hawks. And like I said, we didn't have YouTube. I couldn't go home and just sit there and watch and watch and watch and watch and try and memorize and, and learn and learn. It was all like, okay, they maybe play me one quick one line, and then they were like, okay, go. And I'd be like, uh, okay, um, um, um. And I was just getting so frustrated. Like the first few episodes, I was so frustrated. And they'd say, this Nicole, who was our director at the time, would go, too old, too old, she's too old. So I'd be raising my voice and raising my voice. And it got to a point where I was just screaming all the time. And I was <laughs> so frustrated with it. And I would go home crying, saying to my husband, I just, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do. You know, like she's just getting me to scream all the time. That's not what I think this character should be. And he, every day he would say, you have to make it your own. Make it your own. Like, they don't want my own. They want Terry. What am I going to do? Oh. And he's like, just make it your own. Babe, babe, make it your own. <laughs> saying that, saying that. And then one day I went in there and went, okay, I'm not yelling anymore. I'm not doing this screamy thing anymore. I'm not doing this. I'm doing it the way I want to do it. And that's when, to me, the character started to fold into the one that I had created. Like, more of a goofy teenager who... who Teenagers are, are amazing. Don't tell my daughter I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except Shay. She's perfect. Um, but teenagers are amazing because they're, they're that cross between a child and an adult. And they don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know how to, how to take that. So there's these perfect little teenagers that are like goofy, goo goofy. Oh, you meek old head. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they've got to, they've got to save the world. They're there, and they've got this responsibility like an adult, and that's the part that I just loved about that. So that that was sort of my moment, I would say. I can't remember what the question. What's your most memorable? What's the most memorable? memorable. Uh. When, I heard, when I listened to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad he's not here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, you know, I, we did so many episodes. I can't pinpoint one specific memorable moment, except that this is slightly unrelated, but. Um, a friend of mine was a school teacher, and she was teaching grade threes, and I was well into the series, and she said, you have to come in, you're sailing Mars, you have to come in and, and be sailing Mars for these for these kids, and I just was so proud of myself, I'm like, oh, this is, uh, I have arrived, I am <laughs> sailing Mars, and I was so excited, and I went into the classroom, and I got up in front of all these kids, and I went, I'm sailing Mars, and did my whole thing, and, and they all looked at me, and they went, <laughs> and I went, no, I'm still on Mars. I, I'm still on Mars. And now this is a bunch of great, se I mean, seven year olds, and they're all looking at me. No, no. So that's the one I'm walking away going, no, I totally am. Because it doesn't have to be exactly, I mean, things you've done in the backstage that's very memorable. It's just that more or less on set stuff. Like, it doesn't but have to be connected-wise, more or less. But behind the scenes, I'm just saying, but a lot of the times we were by ourselves when we were recording. So um, there wasn't really a lot of, you know, back and forth between um, between us. And it was actually great when I would when we'd go in and find out that we'd be, I never actually did any work. No, Sailor yeah, Moon always recorded by herself because she had the bulk of the of the dialogue uh, to get through. And and then sometimes we would work together. Sa different Sailor Scouts would be paired up. And that was really great because then we got to, you know, hi, how's it going? But um, it was a little lonely sometimes. So, um, and went by too fast. So I'm just going to say, I, I don't know, Johnny. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no memory. <laughs> I have a... Uh... I have a very interesting memory. Uh, it was the day I got fired. <laughs> oh. Now, I told you that we worked with a kind of a crazy lady. I was fired very, very late on. I don't even know. It was at, well, I was fired after the series. What? The series was completed. <laughs> and that's the story, Susan. Is why. It's like, that's like, uh, I, I actually, I was, I was, said, she said, you're fired, don't come back, you're not here, can't find me anymore. <laughs> and I, and I, I went away, I was like, oh, wow. Now, that had been my first voice directing hire, uh, whatever, 20 years ago. Uh, and so I was somewhat devastated. 
because I, I was a working performer, but I had found that I really loved doing the voice directing. And, I mean, that's you know, still a great love of mine today. And I, I, I finally, I, I called her and I said, we have to get together, I've got to talk to you. And I met her at the, I think it was a, a, a little restaurant up near the studio. She was in doing some post-production. And I said, Nicole, can I ask, I think I did a really good job. I did everything you wanted. I brought my heart and my soul and my spirit to this job. Why did you fire me? And she said, you are too good to the performance. <laughs> oh. And I said, what? I was absolutely incredulous. She said, you are too good to the, to the act out. You should not be as good. <laughs> and, I, 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 and from that moment on, I knew I, I was really glad I'd been fired. <laughs> she, in fact, hired me later, because I guess she couldn't find anybody else who would work with her. <laughs> she, in fact, hired me for a few more projects. Someone uh, should have fired her. Pardon me? Someone should have fired her. Well, she you know, she felt, in her way, that you've got to be strict with performers. And you guys both work with me. Yep. I'm strict, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Work with you. Yeah. That yeah. sounds good. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't believe in that kind of, you know, I mean, I'm not, you have whatever. Fun. Yeah, exactly. That's what oh, we did have at Santa We had fun. We did. We laughed. I mean, sometimes we it was at our producer's cry. expense, <laughs> mind you, but we did at least laugh a lot. And yep. I think that's that's one of the blessings we have all doing what we do. We have a chance to sort of laugh at it and, and laugh with it, and there are enough breaks that we can relax and, 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 and joke around and become friends. Rainbow. Uh, in what ways are you similar to your characters? What ways are I didn't have a character all passive. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, my hot body. <laughs> 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 um, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I really am very, very similar to Sailor Mars. I don't have special powers to do things. Um, <laughs> But I really, I was saying this earlier, but other than she's an Aries and I'm a Capricorn, I actually feel, and also I think she likes some, some crazy food. I think she likes vegetarian pizza, which is crazy to me. But other than that, we have a lot of similar um, characteristics. So, yeah. Um, it's funny the way a lot of us, I think, uh, as, a, as much as Nicole was perhaps a little bit of a, uh, a thorny person. She did cast this series very well. I think all the Sailor Scouts' voices really match the appearance of the Scout, and and also their personalities really match well. So in, in my in my case, uh, I love I, I love horses. I think I am. I think I am feisty. If I <laughs> stand up and say, I don't think you're pretty, or I don't think you deserve that, I'll say, Well, I think you're wrong. So there. <laughs> Well, looking back, um, there were a lot of like uh, cuts from the early uh, seasons. But um, if you were to go back and view them, like for instance, that little face that Sailor Mars does at near her debut episode, what would you do? If I were to go back and you, you're saying, would I do anything differently? You mean? Yeah, exactly. And and this, and this goes for everybody in the entire cast. When I watch. The original stuff, because I've been doing this for well now 20 years, because Sailor Moon's 20 years for us. Um, when I watched the very first, I think Sailor Mars came in episode seven, maybe. Yeah, it was episode seven. Yeah, look, I'm looking around. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, I'm not. Um, so yeah, when she came in and I watched the very first few episodes, I was talking. Um, it just, I could tell that I wasn't in her character yet, because at the in the very beginning, this is to just digress just for a tiny bit. Um, Sailor Mercury, Karen and I sounded a lot alike. And we both have very high voice. We could have very high voices. And I could have done the Alex voice from Totally Spies, but I don't, I think, God, didn't have to do that. <laughs> our voices were so similar that we had to settle into our voices. So when I watched the first few episodes as Sailor Mars, I was talking, I wasn't really talking as Sailor Mars. I was talking in this, it was just slightly, I could tell that I wasn't quite there yet. So, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't think I, I would change anything, and there was no time to change anything. That's the most important thing. This, When we recorded this, it just went by lickety-split. 
I think you okay. all know, we've talked about it before, that it's recorded with a Rhythmo band, which is very much like a karaoke bar under the screen. <laughs> yeah. So there's a big screen, and we, you're looking at the action, but most of all, you're looking at the words coming across the bottom. And the words are coming, and then when they hit a certain point, you can say the words. And uh, you don't know what's going on because uh, sometimes the words aren't there yet. And then sometimes the words will be, as we were saying, if you I love you, will be written I L L L O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O So as you can imagine, there's not a lot of time for deep um, <laughs> analysis. It's just say it. Just what, how do you how do you act in Sailor Moon? You just go in and you do it. May I add to that that scripts were never sent out in advance. We've got really? with wow. most anime dubbing, you don't get a script in advance. Uh, as opposed wow. to original voice really? recording, where you will get a. A, a, a script anywhere three to five to seven days ahead of time, even if you're doing a guest role or a regular, but in uh, dubbing, you walk in and you read that line for the first time as you're recording. Although, I did get a stack of scripts. Did you? Yeah, yeah. but... They're old ones. They were old ones. They, they were the direct translation from Japanese yeah. to English. Oh. And it was just so she, could, she said, you know, get look concept. at this and get an idea of what this show is about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so the English was very strange. It was just very disjointed and most of the time didn't make sense. <laughs> and she'd say stuff like, oh, you speak Japanese. Oh, oh, that's so good. I speak Japanese too. That's all I speak is Japanese, you know. And, and yet it was, of course, translated later. Oh, you speak English. Oh, I speak English too. I don't speak anything else but English. <laughs> <laughs> so... For me, if I was going to change anything, I would change absolutely everything. <laughs> no. I am a perfectionist, and that's it. It, it's, it drives me crazy. Like listening to anything I've done, I've got, I go, oh, oh, why did I breathe there? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, my other, my mini moons have also shown up, and my Darian have shown up. <laughs> Aww. Yes. Embarrassing. Oh, no. <laughs> My daughter Jackie, Jackie, put your hand up. That little girl back there was not even one when I did Sailor Moon. And she was this little tiny thing that had this white blonde hair. And when I was trying to warm up, I, you know, my voice, I was always losing my voice because I was screaming so much. And so I'd walk around home going, you know, oh gosh, and I'd be talking to the kids like this, and they just sort of look at me like, here, here, here. <laughs> they always look at me like that. And Jackie was so little, and I would go, I'd walk around going, ooh, ooh, and she'd go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, uh, and I'd say, are you making fun of me? And she'd say, <laughs> <laughs> she still does. <laughs> okay, questions. New, new questions. Yeah. How about right. Right? Oh, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, I just had a question. Um, there have been rumors going around that Funimation was looking to redub Sailor Moon. Do, uh, do you know if that's true? And if it is, would you like to go back and do it again? Always. Uh, let me. Uh, I, I, we uh, we did uh, that this morning, uh, and uh, that uh, very issue came up, and we were informed. A young lady may be in the audience right now. I there don't she know. is. There we go. <laughs> why don't you stand up yeah. and say what you? Why said don't you? Yeah. Why don't you uh, give the information? I had heard it was being done. I've heard about it for three years. Heard it was being done somewhere in Texas. This young lady has the, has the, the goods. Stand up.
So is the, you're saying that they would be starting right from scratch? Yeah, what you're saying is, is they'll start right from the very, very beginning. It may be re-edited somewhat. Uh, it may be... Yeah, well, what I've heard is they confirmed, like, not Funimation, but, like, OA Japan, that there's going to be a new season. Yeah, if, yeah, that, and that's, yeah that, right. and that was, that was gonna actually my question, but, like, there's going to be a brand new season of Sailor Moon. Correct. And I think that's coming up this summer, actually. Next summer, yeah. or next summer. Yeah. But it's a matter of whether they're going to revoice all of the original Could that be the Sailor Star series that they're doing? No. 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 So uh, what we uh, what we have I started a whole connection. <laughs> uh, it won't be done as well. So the original cast. Oh, are, boo. Where do you sign up? Would <laughs> 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 you guys need to have like opinion about the new season? Like, are you happy that it's continuing on or? Without yeah. us? Oh, not without us. No way. <laughs> oh, <are you> <laughs> <laughs> I wish them nothing but disaster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously. The fan at the very back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, after the series is over, or like after you guys stop recording, is it hard for you to find um, the guy your character? <laughs> yeah, I would always talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, every little. Um, Every time you raised your eyebrow or your eyes opened wider or you did anything, they wanted a noise for it when I was doing it. So you'd be like, oh, oh, oh. So we, I would literally, like they would go through the whole thing, we'd be watching, and I'd go, oh, 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 oh. Constantly watching for these little things, like, I missed another one, go back. Oh. You know? So I found I was doing that at home all the time. One of the kids would say something, I'd go, oh. I'm really irritated with my children. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that I was doing it all the time, but after, because we were screaming so much all the time, my voice, my regular voice, although right now it seems a little higher, but my, I think it's a lot lower than what Sailor Mars does, but after screaming and screaming, I would sound like Minnie Mouse. I would have this <laughs> tiny little voice like, hi Katie, what? Where are you? Who are you? You know, and I just like, hear it in my voice. It was really hard for me to come back to a natural tone in my voice. Um, I, I'm glad you brought up the screaming. I don't know if you realize how much, I'm sure you do, how much screaming is involved in every single episode of Sailor Moon. <laughs> I mean, and so uh, we would, this, not that there's anything wrong with screaming. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to release, uh, you know, a pent up anger or whatever. But it really does wreck your voice. I don't know if any of you have ever just, you know, gotten sort of really angry at somebody and you scream your lungs out and then afterwards you went, ooh, wow, I, I don't sound like myself anymore. So that's what, what would happen is, and this Rizmo band would just say, a scream is usually just A, H, 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 and then you're looking up to see, well, why are they screaming? Oh, they're screaming, oh, they're screaming and they're twirling. Oh, great. <laughs> so it's not just, ah, it's, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And there's nothing worse. Now, here's a hint. Cheap, cheap cartoon actors who don't do proper screams. This is something that, listen to some of the shows that you that are popular now, and you'll hear the, 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 the lazy actor. And you, you know he's supposed to scream or he's supposed to fall. <clears throat> Pardon me. So a fall is supposed to go like this. It's always written oof, O-O-F, in the script or on the rhythm event. So it says character falls, so it's going to look like this. Fall, 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 land is oof, right? So it's supposed to be done like this. Uh, uh, so you start to fall. Uh, 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 uh. That's the fall. Uh, that's the land, right? The lazy actor goes like this. That's Usually a teenage boy who wants to get out of there. Because I know I'm earning fifty thousand dollars a year doing this show, but I gotta meet my friends afterwards. So he's lazy, and so he's supposed to be falling off the cliff, and he goes like this: ah, 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 ah oof! And you hear the actual oof. Now, does that sound like somebody's landing on the ground after falling off the cliff? Oof! Oof! Oh, oof. Nobody goes oof. <laughs> Acting, the sound is this. Ooh. Okay, can we all do it. One, two, three. Ooh. 
I hope my phone doesn't die. Uh, yeah, um, one thing I wanted to point out is that as a kid, um, the Sailor Moon says, which is the message that they begin every episode, I'd always used to follow that as a kid. I would like to know how that happened, why did you guys decide to do that, and also what's your favorite Sailor Moon says? I don't know. I think they stopped Sailor Moon says when I started. Yeah. 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 Thank you for confirming that. You may answer this now. <laughs> you know, I honestly don't remember. I think we did that in Totally Spies. That was the confessional. You know what? I'm, I'm going to, it's all the same. It's kind of blurring together for me because I was Alex on Totally Spies. So we used to do very similar things, but I can't remember. No, I, I, I really don't remember what a specific thing Mars would say except like, believe in yourself or something. You know, <laughs> specifically, but I, I think I mentioned this yesterday. I thought that part of it was great because they would just sit and talk and chat about stuff that uh, would seem to be really ordinary and like problems that would crop up at school or problems that, you know, you're standing at your locker and somebody comes along and says something that's rude or horrible and then walks away and you feel crappy for the rest of the day and you don't know what to do about it or where to go with it. And the fact that they... You see, it was so neat that all that stuff was addressed. And I would like to know if that if that section, does anyone know that Sailor Moon says, was that in the original, in the Japanese? No. no. So some writer somewhere, probably a Canadian writer, had the footage <laughs> of and said, well, what are we going to do with this footage of this girl sitting and talking? And then... <clears throat> <clears throat> Hold on, me. I had two voice work and I got a froggy in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So some of these writers came up with this wonderful idea and we don't even know who the heck it was. We don't even know who wrote all these. Well, maybe it's well, on the credits that flash by like this. Boom, 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 <laughs> that you can't ever, ever see anything. If I might add something. Um, the, um, most of the footage that came from Japan needed to be dramatically and drastically edited. Body lines. Blood. There were certain Animal things. abuse. <laughs> <laughs> that we couldn't use for North American consumption. Surprise. Therefore, the shows were really seriously edited. And when you take out certain entire scenes or a certain storyline, you've got to rewrite the script. All you've got to do is, if you've got the footage and it's all cut, just have to make sure that the new storyline that's written matches the lips, so that the dialogue had to be massaged so that it would still match the lips. Consequently, many, many episodes came up short. And so when they did have additional footage, if they could add it in, since there were no serious costume changes, as you know, <laughs> uh, they would... Um, they would be able to, to fabricate uh, a one-minute slug at the end that would take up the time that compensated for a lot of the edits that went on. That had to go. Okay. And, and that still goes on today. Almost all anime that is um, reconfigured for uh, North American audiences. Uh, I mean, they don't have... When, they, when you see a kid riding a bicycle, they don't have a helmet. You cannot run any animation in North America without with a kid on a bicycle without a helmet. So it's either going to be reanimated. That's a safety. I mean, that's all the new stuff that goes into original voice and and uh, and anime as well. There are so many restrictions now. Uh, weapons, uh, small knives, and, and things like that. You know, you they have to somehow uh, in uh, reanimate to get rid of the weapon and put a zucchini in or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Well, you know, that's the way it is. Shoot him with the zucchini. I was at the Beyblade, the original Beyblade, and they it just killed them. They would have to send stuff back. 
uh, that they couldn't use. They, were, they would have episodes. They were supposed to be 22 minutes long. They came in at 16. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. They had to cut so much out. So we, anyway. just like with that example, when it was like 16 said 22, what did you end up having to do? I don't know. I just, I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> my end of things. The strategy? Yeah. Um, it, it never really got to me having to do anything really beyond my, my jurisdiction. It would be the producer who would get it and say, I'd have to, at that point, make phone calls or uh, arrange to have something done. You can, they, they, they have the ability to reanimate. Uh, and, and substitute scenes. Or they would steal, again, m the, the costuming was identical. They wore the same thing in every episode. They could steal some footage from somewhere else, build a, a little bit of a scene, extend the scene. Uh, 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 oh, geez, my phone's the, running out of there, room. There beasts. You can extend that fighting scene if you only had the right dialogue underneath. So bad. Well, they would show us, sometimes they would show us um, it right before we did the take. So they say, you want to see it in Japanese first? And you go, okay. And then you see this. <laughs> and so we see sort of basically what oh, we going on. And we'll be like, okay, I'm not going to do it anything like that. Yeah. So we see a little bit of it, but I've never seen the whole thing all the way through. I, I remember seeing clips of it. And um, and I always thought, and I don't know, because I, I don't, I don't know Japanese. At all, but I just thought Sailor Mars sounded way whinier in Japanese because you know I don't think I whined. Really. Oh, really. No. <laughs> Chuck Testa. I whined. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, whiny. Cheesy. Uh, we. Um, I watched uh, a couple of uh, bits of the first episode when we first started working on it. And I couldn't really differentiate between the Sailor Scouts when I was watching it because I don't, I also don't speak Japanese and I don't understand it. So I actually found it a little more confusing. Um, but one thing that I did note when I was, note, note, I sounded there like I was, I don't know where I'm from. Um, <laughs> I, I lost the will to live. This is one of John's favorite expressions that he used to say way back when he was a young and skinny man. And he was a young and skinny man, I can assure you. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We're, you know what? We're getting tired and it's kind of airless. And yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> so so I'm, we're all kooky. Uh, Just so you know, just Susan, um, you're totally out of the beauty contest at this point. In terms of listening to the original track, he helped me as a voice director, and I'm really, really disappointed that it didn't help them as performers. But the emotion. Uh, if, it was, if, if you listen to the music, the, yes. you basically have to duplicate the same music. If it was, why do you want me to go? Instead of, why do you want me to go? Well, because we weren't given a lot of lead time and we didn't have a lot of scripts ahead of time, although I did, I had a couple of days in, but they had to know when they listened to the Japanese track that it was da 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 instead of da 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 That's the advantage of having it, was just to pick up that too. I understand we have time for one more question. Who's got a really great question? That, uh, yes. At the back, you were. Does. We had a good one yesterday. Hey, so anyway, I have two questions. Um, one is, um, what First one. Do you ever break into the theme song randomly? <laughs> 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 By daylight, never running from a real fight. She is the one named Sailor. Ba 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, you're good. <laughs> I often find myself going, Darian? Darian? <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> I, I, well, Sailor Mars was 
warrior. So, um, yeah, no, I, I don't know if I specifically go to Mars, but I'm a very um, strong person. So, yeah, I never asked for Darian, which is why you got him. <laughs> <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> Actually, I do do this in my real life, and I, I swear to God, and what it is is sometimes, you know, when you're about to do something, like uh, remove the raccoon from the garbage pail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Because I opened it, you know, I went, and I went, oh, oh, my God, and I went back like two hours later, uh, and I said, I have to do this, and I, I, I can't do this, I can't, because I'm, I, I just can't do it, and I, you know what I did? I said to myself, wait a second, wait a minute, okay. So there I am standing there all cowardly. I said, stand up tall, be like Sailor Jupiter, and say, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> and up I went. And I took the lid off. And I went, ah! And I <laughs> <laughs> we go we do we should we really should uh get these guys to do their 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 uh their calls yeah! <laughs> deep breath okay <laughs> 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 wait we're recording oh my god all of these pictures will be plastered across the internet tomorrow <laughs> Thank you for that, guys, because I'm sure they're all going to be so attractive. <laughs> okay. Jupiter!